Thank you very much for the introduction and really for the invitation to this very prestigious meeting. I wanted to talk to TASA two years ago and this was the time I think which was meant to be. So I'm very happy to be among us. And the previous talk really set the stage for me, so I hope I will not be boring you too much about uh, um, myself, but uh, let's see. Yeah, I took, I took all those, yeah. Yeah, I can use this. This is board. Okay. Yeah, I can use this. Yeah. Is it possible? Did you switch that? Yeah, that's the wrong, the wrong one. Okay. Um, I am a bioengineer, but uh, I am added uh, to become a bioengineer afterwards. As it was very well explained in the previous talk, my background is pharmacy. And I work in the College of Pharmacy, Department of Biopharmaceutical Sciences, but bioengineering department insisted that I should become their faculty too because what I am doing is directly bioengineering. So I wasn't sure if it was right, but now I, I'm more convinced that it is the way to go because I'm married to an engineer and my son is an engineer and the engineers I knew were not this type of engineers. But of course now all the disciplines are coming through, so I'm, I'm happy to be in this group as a bioengineer. And what we do is we are attacking a big problem. I don't think I need to convince you that cancer is a very serious, devastating disease. So with cancer therapy, actually there's no cure. And uh, that would be a very big achievement if we could at least partially address some issues related to cancer, and that was my work I did for the last 30 years at UIC. So how we attacked cancer, just specifically to therapy, chemotherapy aspect of it. Previously, I did do imaging and so forth too, but I will only focus on the therapy part in this talk because of the time and also uh, that's our focus now. What is wrong with the chemotherapy which is going on right now in the clinics? We identify two serious problems. One is definitely chemotherapy agents are very toxic. And the, uh, in the clinics, drugs cannot be given at the right dose to kill every single cancer cell. So in order to cure cancer, we really have to clean every single cancer cell from the body. When the chemotherapy starts and the cancer responses, tissue shrinks, that is good. But if you don't take every single cancer Afterwards, those uh, leftover cancer cells will be not only grow again, but they will grow in a resistant way. So they become smart. They don't die as easily as they did in the first time. So these two problems that we were attacking was achieved by using some drug carrier systems. So these drug carrier systems that we used are again my cells, and the composition is, I was being, being a pharmacist related to the human body closer than really the other engineers. I never touched anything that is toxic, that is not natural to the body. So we used phospholipids, which are the major components that composes the uh, cell membrane. And these phospholipid mice cells, we use them 
um, to make micelles and the core is used to solubilize, stabilize the drug and the entire nanoparticle is used to target the drug to the cancer tissue. So these are self-assemblies, so it's very easy to prepare, and also they are coated with PEG, which I will show now, uh, which makes them long circulating in the blood. So a typical phospholipid here has two hydrophobic, that means water-hating part, and a small water-liking section. So the whole molecule, even though it is amphiphilic, has both parts. The ma major dominant part is the hydrophobic part. So a typical phospholipid cannot dissolve in water and only can self-assemble as bilayers having another molecule with two hydrophobic parts here and the polar head on this side and form bilayers like in the cell membrane. But when a polymer, which is polyethylene glycol, added on the polar head group, the whole molecule becomes more water soluble. So now it can dissolve in water and also the shape becomes from conical to, uh, from cylindrical to conical which provides a very nice shape and water solubility to form these simple micelles. These simple micelles in the core hydrophilic acyl chains and little polar head groups and the peg polar coating group. This peg group is very important because it is protecting this particle and the content, and it is like an invisible water layer on the surface of the particle. So the obstinates in the body, which are proteins that would take the foreign particles to the, to the liver as a defense mechanism, will not work. So we want this part, oh. We want this particle um, to circulate in the blood to carry the drug, right? And most importantly, this particle has a very perfect size, which I will come to later. So, in general, this drug delivery system is so simple, so safe, with the perfect size, um, and to be used as a drug delivery system. And it is actually the components that we use, pegylated lipid, is already in another pharmaceutical product. So it's FDA approved. And it is, uh, as I said, perfect size. And it can be uh, long circulating because of the water layer on the surface. And it can be actively targeted and passively targeted, which I, I will show in the next slide. Very easy to prepare. And the final pharmaceutical product can be stored as a solid state because they are phospholipid not stable. So we have taught from the very beginning when we were creating this till the very end how it can be used in the clinics with, uh, on the human. And let me explain this why most people work on uh, cancer disease or other diseases like with leaky vasculature when they use nanoparticles. This is a cartoon just showing if you can look at these yellow cells as the cells of the vasculature and this is the normal tissue and this red area is the cancer tissue. And as you can see, the vasculature surrounding cells are very tightly connected in the normal tissue. And classical way of currently used therapy is by IV, intravenous 
you inject the drug as a solution into the blood. This is the blood circulating in this vessel. When you inject the uh, drug molecule in free form, the molecules are too small. Every drug molecule smaller than three to four nanometer. And the gaps here are about three nanometer. And they can extravasate out of the circulation in any part of the body. So injected drug goes everywhere in the body, wherever the vessels, blood vessels are going. However, when you put that drug molecule, hide it in a delivery system, then the size of the carrier system controls this extravasation in the normal tissues. Our nanoparticle, nanocarrier, is 15 nanometer. So way much bigger than three, four nanometer. This is why we call these nanoparticles, because we apply actually nanotechnology to deliver the particles to the right spot. So obviously, when we inject the nanoparticles, they can not go out anywhere else but when there is leaky vas vasculature. And this leaky vasculature, as you can see, with big gaps in, in it, is happening with inflammatory diseases and cancer. Cancer is the main one that was first discovered. Because cancer is a growing tissue, it needs to get, it needs to get, <laughs> so sorry about that. It needs to get uh, food from the blood. That is why it, uh, it has these big gaps. And these gaps, in general, are 100 to 100 nanometers. So a 15 nanometer particle with the pressure in the blood will easily escape out in this region. So the carrier with the drug in it is already located in the cancer tissue well, in the first pass. Some may escape and they will come back because the circulation is continuous and in the second pass will again be here. There are other places where there are gaps like the renal ex uh, excretion of particles and their limit is 10 nanometers. So again, 15 nanometer particle is not also cleared by the ren renal excretion. So this is the mechanism that we are basing on. And now a lot of people got this idea and working on it, but believe me, we started 20 years ago. We were one of the pioneers who were doing this first. There was no nanotechnology initiative then. But we just, of course, fit. so once the particles are in the tumor, it is not enough. You want the drug to get out, but you want the drug to be in the cancer cell, drug molecules. For that, we put a ligand, which is a peptide, which is again completely natural. Uh, neuropeptide that exists in everybody naturally, uh, we put that peptide because that peptide's receptors are overexpressed on cancer cells. So because of that, as soon as these particles with the peptide on the surface as a targeting agent goes out into the tum uh, cancer tissue, they are now interacting specifically with the receptors of that peptide and are getting internalized inside the cells. And with, once the whole particle is internalized, we have shown all these, of course, on a microscope and everything, uh, um, and uh, once they are internalized, the, pep, uh, the micelle is a self-assembly and a loose structure degraded because it is phospholipid, and the drug is released right inside the cell. And there's no way any 
cancer cell will escape from dying <laughs> under this mechanism. Another good thing, of course, of this mechanism is because the particles accumulate only in the tumor tissue and the other tissues are not receiving the drug molecules, there is no, there is no uh, toxicity and you can give as high dose as you can, as you want in order to pass that. And just to show you that this is actually the case, my last data, we did, uh, as you can see, when you have peptide attached nanoparticle, most of the drug is accumulated in the tumor tissue, bone and spleen where the side effects are, the minimum drug is accumulated, and the commercial product, which the patients right now are using clinics, are minimum accumulation in the tumor because it's going everywhere, and more accumulation in the toxic tissues. And I'm, as you can see, with a very, very low dose, we, ha we could shrink the tumor 80% with the active targeting, but when we give the clinical dose, the entire tumor on the animals are gone and not coming back. And with this technology, we have not only done cancer, but other uh, um, uh, um, diseases too, right? like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, acute lung injury, diabetes, and so as long as you can target, you can load the drug accordingly. And the latest product we have is SIRNA for the gene therapy. And all of these are published, and I, I can share with you later. With our cancer drug, we are in the talk of with a Turkish pharmaceutical company to develop it in Turkey. Thank you.